Hey guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to link stuff from the storyboard to code, how to make this toggle button work inside the simulator, and how to change the font here to what we have in the design preview. For starters, we need to link our storyboard with code. To do that, we need to understand what needs to be linked. We need to update this UI label whenever the time changes, right? To do that, we need a reference or an object of this UI label in code. There is an area here in your main dot storyboard on the bottom left called the document outline. When you click on this icon, you'll notice that a pane pops open. Inside this pane, you can see all the items that are currently on your screen. For starters, is the view controller scene. There's the view controller which represents the current screen that the user is going to see. Within this, there's the view object that's going to be the complete rectangular area that the user is going to see inside that screen. And then there are other controls that have been added inside that view object as sub views over there. Now, this view controller also has a Swift file which you can see on the left in the project navigator which is the first tab over here where there's the view controller dot swift file now this is where you need to write code if you want to edit something for starters we can go to the main dot storyboard and what we want to do is bring this label or an object of this label or a reference of this label from the main dot storyboard inside the view controller dot swift file so that we can start editing it we can see the swift file and the storyboard together if we go here to the right hand side and select this option which is called the assistant editor let's select that and take a look immediately you will notice that there are two panes right now on the left you have the storyboard and on the right you have this view controller file that controls the code that you are going to write to work with this storyboard so to bring this ui label here we are going to make a special type of connection called an outlet let's just hold down the control button here after selecting the label and simply drag slowly inside the view controller class above this method view did load you can place it anywhere you want but the best place is always at the top because we're going to insert variables here so immediately there is this dialog that pops open where the connection type it says outlet for the label we're going to call this as text time over here and its type is ui label just hit connect over here and take a look at this it says at the rate ib outlet there is week there is where there's text time there's ui label now this basically is a variable in swift of type ui label and the exclamation mark at the end indicates that this variable is an optional in other words it doesn't always need to have a valid value it can have a nil value anytime it wants now let me show you why we did this we go back inside this method called view did load here i'm going to simply say text time dot text equals to say 0 to 30. Now when I run the app, you would notice that the label is no longer 0, 0. Rather, it's 0 to 30. In other words, I manipulated the value of this label by bringing it from the storyboard here in the form of this IB outlet. So as you can see, I've tried referencing the variable over there and I've tried modifying its value inside the view did load method, which is called immediately when this view becomes active on the user's screen. In fact, whatever widgets you have added here on the screen in the main dot storyboard, you can always get an outlet to them by simply control dragging and releasing it here. In this case, I'm trying to get an outlet to that image view inside the view controller.swift file so that I can manipulate the properties of that image view. But in this case, we don't need it because to do so would mean that we want to edit the image in some way programmatically, which we are not going to do in this app. So I'm just going to hit cancel over here. Now, the next thing I would need is to bring the toggle button here because I want to know when the button is pressed. To do that, again, I select the button here first and I hold down the control button and simply drag all the way and I'm going to bring it all the way down here. So this is the second type of connection that we are talking about. If I release this here, I get one more dialog over there. Now the outlet connection is what it lists by default, but I want an action over here. An action simply means a method or a function that is going to be called when you do something with the button. So let me demonstrate how this works. I'll give it a name, say button pressed, and I will hit connect over here. Once I do that, immediately you notice that Swift creates a method here or a function here that has this name called button pressed. So I have added a statement here saying print and it says button was pressed. Now let me show you what this means when we run the app. 
at the top here right hand side i'm going to enable an area called the debug area to do that i will select the second option that is hide or show the debug area currently it's hidden if i click show here it becomes blue in color as you notice and now you see this new pane that has appeared at the bottom on running the app in the simulator this is what we see it's 230 if i click on now look at that there is a message here that says button was pressed in other words when you press this button the connection with the viewcontroller.swift file where you have this function button pressed gets called or activated and this statement within that or all the statements that you write within this function is going to be executed by your compiler and therefore you see the statement at the bottom once again if you try hitting the button by going to our simulator let's say off or on whatever you do look at that the statements keep getting generated at the bottom depending on how many times you're pressing the button and this function is called for each particular time to turn this simple button into a toggle button which basically has two images and has two states we need to use a boolean variable the idea is something like this if the button is off the very first time by default and when you press on it it should go to the state on when it is on if you press on it it should again go back to the state off and so on so the first thing i'm going to do is go to the top here and make a variable the variable called will timer run equals to false because ultimately depending on what you do with the button the timer is going to run or stop right so currently by default i'm saying that the timer will not run so i'm going to go to this method here button pressed and here i'm going to say will timer run equals to not will timer run in other words i'm reversing the status of that variable every time the button is pressed now notice i'm going to have an if else condition here by saying if will timer run so there's my condition if the timer will run then button is on otherwise the button is off let's test this out on our simulator and see how it works so there you go there's our app running i click on on it says button is on when i click it again it goes to off once again i click it it goes to on and so on it's working perfectly in other words we have turned this button into a two state machine where it's going to be either off or it's going to be on and that is done with the help of this statement here where we are reversing the value of the boolean variable every time the button is pressed now as a developer you can see here in the console whether the button is on or off but as a user on the simulator i cannot see whether the button is on or off because the image doesn't change over here to do that first i need to change the image but before for changing the image i need a reference to that button so that i can access its properties to do so i'm going to create one other, one more outlet over here just go back to the main dot storyboard here this time and hold down your control button after selecting the button out there and bring it somewhere right over here above the view did load method once you release it you get the option to create one more outlet call this the toggle button out there and hit connect over here so now you have a reference to our button which is called toggle button variable over here so going back to the button pressed method this time we can change the property of that toggle button by saying toggle button here dot set image now we need to set the appropriate image based on which state the button is currently in i'm going to cancel calling the set image method rather i'm going to go here and first choose the image the object that represents an image in Swift in code is UI image class out here. The UI image class takes several arguments, but the one we are interested in would be the name of the file. There is the UI image, you give it the name of the file and it's going to give you the object. If you remember, we added those images earlier in the assets.xc assets folder over there. So we can directly refer to the name as of underscore png or on underscore one x dot png. Now, however, we have a condition here. If the timer will run, then we want an image that represents the on state. Otherwise, we want an image for the off state. The way I do that is by doing something like this. I have the ternary operator for short circuiting an if else condition over here. So if the timer will run, then give me on underscore 1x dot png. If this value is false, then give me off underscore 1x dot png. Now, this is going to be given to a variable let's call it image over here now notice i have used a let over here to indicate that this is a constant by default swift is encouraging you all the time to create constants out there we can set the image on the button by saying toggle button which is our variable representing the toggle button out there by calling dot set image here now when you do that the first 
parameter that you need to pass is the image object which we just created above. The second would be the state under which the button is currently present. Now buttons exist in some states like when the user is doing nothing with the button is in the normal state. If the user is pressing the button it goes to highlighted and so on. So I'm going to say UI control state dot normal here. Notice it says the normal or default state of a control that is enabled but neither selected nor highlighted. So that's exactly what we want. Now we have set the image. Let's try running the app and see how it goes. So there's the app running. If I click on on right now, take a look at that. Bam! Our image is changing and it says button is on here. If you click off here, the button becomes off and our image once again changes back. So that's why we did this condition over here where we determine the value of the variable and the right image to choose based on the value of that boolean variable. The video has exceeded the duration I anticipated. Therefore, in the next video, I will cover how to use the custom font that is the Source Sans Pro TTF file that you see in the design preview over here before we finally wrap up our design and enter the code where we build the timer. In the meantime, stay tuned with Design Coder. All the videos covering the design, the Android part and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.